All right, so the developer of Viralux Hypermetric Stretch has already made a couple improvements to the scripts three days after I put out my last video on it. So this is just a quick update. Just wanted to go over the two new features that he has included in the script. Makes it a little bit easier to use and gives everybody a little bit of control over the vivid colors that we were seeing sometimes too. So let's check it out real quick. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so working with my Crescent Nebula image again, I've already cropped, did a background extraction and ran color calibration using um, SPCC, Spectral Photometric Color Calibration. So we're ready to go and run the script. So I'm gonna change my auto stretch view back into linear and then come up into scripts, Python scripts, processing, and Viralux hypermetric stretch. Like I said, we're not. this video isn't going over how to use the script in its entirety. I just did that a few days ago. This is an updated video to show the updated features within the new version of the script that have just recently been released. So the first one is a live preview. So if we click our live preview button, we get just as it indicates our live preview of our image and just so you're aware you can zoom in and out on the image using your mouse wheel you can zoom in zoom out you also have plus and minus buttons here for the same purpose and then you can make the window bigger if you like click your fit button and it'll bring it and fit it to the screen for you so that's our live preview window if we just leave we'll just leave our default target background set to 0 0.20 and click the auto calc log d button and what it is showing us in our live preview is what the stretch is going to look like applied when we come over here and we click the process button, right? So there's our stretched image. Now let's go back. So we're going to undo that and reload our input, put our defaults back, and now we're back to square one again. So what the live preview allows you to do is if we, again, hit the auto calc button, before clicking process, we can make adjustments to what we see in our live preview. So we would do that with our target background number. So if I want to take this 0.2 and make it lower, as I lower it, if you watch the preview screen, you can see that it's getting darker and darker and darker as I go down lower. At this point, we can simply just click process and it'll take what it has in the preview and again, stretch the image for us. And that's one way of doing it, and it is a valid way of doing it, but it is not the recommended or necessarily the best way of doing it. And the reason for that is when we hit auto calc, when we were set to 0 0.20 for our target background, 5.08 was the determined log D value. As we made changes, as I was adjusting this from the 0.2, and I can go back up to the 0.2, you can see log D is not changing. That stretch factor is going to remain the same. So it's fine to do it that way, but from a mathematical point of view, it's not 100% correct now. If it looks good and you're happy with it, that's fine. But just wanted to point it out to you, that's one way of doing it. So let's look at the recommended way of doing it. So I'm going to undo the image. We'll reset our defaults and reload the input again. Start at point 20. We're going to hit auto calc. There's what the image will look like with that target background. And then once again, I'm going to take this back down to point 0.2. And like I said, you can see our 5.08, our log D is not changing as I'm decreasing my target background. Once I got to point 0.12, now I click auto calc again and it'll recalculate. You can see our stretch value for log D has been changed. Now, based on the algorithm, this is 100% correct. This is what you'd want to look at. Now, when you click auto calc, you will see the image change slightly over here. So pay attention because what you had in the preview before you click the auto button will change slightly once you do have it recalculate the new log D value for you. So just take a look, make sure that's what you like. At this point, you can hit process. Before we do that this time though, I want to talk about the second new feature in the script and that's the chromatic preservation, the color grip down here on the bottom. Default one, this slider Ricardo put in there for us, for all of us that feel that some of the images look like they're way too saturated, right? In my example down here, this does look a little oversaturated, even though no saturation has been added. Again, this is all just signal, but this slider allows us to adjust that, but it also now takes away from the whole idea of what this script is doing for us, right? So we're, we're kind of stepping outside of the accuracy of what the algorithm has presented to us. Move this slider down. You can either use the slider itself or you can use the up and down buttons here, but you can see what's happening in the image as I bring this over to the left. It's softening the vividness of the red that's in the Crescent Nebula. 
like I said, this is taking away from what the algorithm is actually doing for us. And Ricardo actually doesn't want anybody to touch this slider just because it does break the end state of what this, the algorithm is giving to you. And the second thing that happens whenever you move the slider away from this 1.0 is Ricardo sheds a tear quietly in his office as he can hear you guys sliding that down to the left. So again, we'll move this over and sorry, Ricardo, but I, I do want to tame my red down a little bit here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now I am happy with what I see in my preview and I'm going to click process and we'll move the preview out of the way. And you can see once again, what I had in the preview has been applied to the main image within Cyril. So a script that was already fantastic has just gotten better in a matter of three days. So it's all the buzz on the internet nowadays within our community. Before you guys go, I want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and I buy me a coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, like and share the video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Once again, thanks for your time. We'll see you on the next video in clear skies.